Hi, Claire. We were worried about you. Now, this movie right here is a good one. This is yet another movie that I watched at an age where I shouldn't have been watching it. <laughs> Even though this is a thriller, it doesn't involve an affair. No, it involves a crazy widow who takes out her grief and anger on an innocent family instead of her sicko husband. Peyton was truly psychotic, and you can tell me she didn't show signs prior to losing it all. But as you already know, while watching this movie, I noticed some things and I have my thoughts. But before we get to that, it's time to recap. So let's get into it. As the movie opens, we see one of our main characters, Claire, at the kitchen sink. She's startled by this guy, which prompts her husband, Michael, to go and confront him. It turns out he meant no harm and was there to fix their fence. Solomon, his name by the way, was referred to their family by a local organization that assists individuals like him in finding employment. Though they are nervous and wonder if Solomon will do a good job, those concerns are laid to rest pretty quickly. Solomon connects well with Claire, Michael, and their daughter, Emma. Later that day, Claire goes to her prenatal appointment and everything goes as normal until the doctor asks the nurse to call a patient and grab lab results for him, leaving Claire alone with him. I'm sure most of my viewers are at an age that they know this, but just in case you are a bit younger or simply don't know, a nurse or another member of staff is supposed to be in the room with you along with the doctor. But of course, this isn't what happens with Claire and the doctor takes full advantage. After this sick and questionable exam, Claire rushes out of the doctor's office and goes into a stress-induced asthma attack. She rushes home and takes a shower and later tells Michael what happened. She starts doubting herself, thinking maybe she took things the wrong way, but Michael urges her to file a complaint. If we don't report this, he's gonna do the same thing to somebody else. We fast forward to news getting out about the doctor. It turns into a scandal after multiple patients reported him to the medical board after Claire's initial report. And Dr. Mott does what most cowards do. He kills himself, leaving his wife to deal with this mess. His wife, Peyton, was pregnant at the time. She had to deal with losing her husband, losing whatever inheritance she was due because of all the victims suing him, and losing her lifestyle. Due to the stress of all of this, she loses her child as well and is forced to have a hysterectomy because of that loss. Despite what she does as this film progresses, I can understand how this can drive someone to madness. It was a lot all at one time. It doesn't excuse her actions though. While she's still in the hospital, she sees news coverage of her husband's case and locks in on an image of Claire and she immediately starts plotting. Meanwhile, Solomon continues working for the family and he's adjusting well, even showing his humor. Coming up to the back door. I'm getting close to the back door. I am now entering the back door. Claire tells Michael that she wants to build her own greenhouse and Michael urges her to find a nanny so that she can have more time to do that. So Claire starts putting out fillers for a new nanny. Sometime later, while taking Emma to the bus stop, she forgot to hand her her raincoat. As she's chasing down the bus, Peyton gets the driver's attention and gets them to stop the bus for Claire. As Claire thanks her, Peyton tells her that she's heard through the grapevine that she's looking for a nanny and came to inquire about the position and Claire invited her in to talk. Peyton tells her how she lost her husband and baby at the same time and how being a nanny has helped her heal and given her purpose, which was a total lie. <laughs> Claire introduced Peyton to Solomon and this meeting doesn't go well because Solomon makes a mistake by touching her shirt and staining it. And though he apologizes profusely, Peyton was still pissed and Solomon picked up on her bad vibe and rushed off. Claire invited Peyton over for dinner later so that she could meet the rest of the family. So later that night, Peyton comes by for dinner and meets Emma. She watches how Claire and Michael interact and you could just tell that she was resentful. During dinner, Claire and Michael step out of the room and they both speak highly of her. As Claire was leaving the room, she dropped her earring and Peyton used this to pretend as if she saved the baby from swallowing it. 
honestly, she didn't even have to pull this stunt because the job was pretty much hers, but they officially hired her soon after. And Solomon still wasn't feeling her. In the middle of the night, Peyton wakes up to calm the baby and she starts breastfeeding the baby. And this is the beginning of her forming an unhealthy attachment to the baby and the baby starts to bond with her. We fast forward to Michael and Claire's date night. Initially, Claire was going to wear this red number, but Peyton intercepts and stains the dress with Claire's perfume. Meanwhile, Peyton's friend Marlene and her boo had arrived while Peyton went down to grab club soda to help Claire with the stain, and Marlene smells Claire's perfume on her. Listen, Marlene was on to her from the beginning. Claire ends up changing her outfit last minute and they all go on their double date. While Michael and Claire are gone, Peyton spends time with Emma and she tells Peyton about a bully at school and you already know Peyton is plotting. But while they are on their double date, Marlene warns Claire about hiring attractive help and urges her to keep an eye on Peyton. And Peyton continues to breastfeed the baby child. The next day as she's walking around the neighborhood, a random lady mentions that the baby has her eyes and Peyton goes along with it. Again, she's forming an unhealthy attachment to this baby. While on her walk, Peyton decides to swing by Emma's school and get Charles, Emma's bully, together. I got a message for you, Rod. Leave Emma alone. If you don't, I'm gonna rip your fucking head off. Since Peyton was breastfeeding the baby so often, the baby no longer wanted to feed with Claire. So this prompts Claire to ask Peyton if she'd noticed something different with the baby. And of course, Peyton played dumb. Claire offered to drop Michael's proposal off at FedEx for him since it had to go out that day and he had so much to do. Peyton overhears this and again starts plotting. While Peyton, Claire, and the baby are out, Claire asks Peyton what happened with her husband and Peyton tells her that he was murdered. They never caught who did it, but I firmly believe what goes around comes around. Talking about what happened with her husband brings up heavy feelings for her and she excuses herself and proceeds to damage the bathroom and tear up Michael's proposal in a rage. Later, when Claire goes to FedEx to drop it off, she's unable to find it and goes into another stress-induced asthma attack. It was in your purse. I saw you put it in there. Unfortunately, because of this, Michael has to wait till next quarter to rescind his proposal, and Claire felt really guilty about it. Claire continued to struggle with breastfeeding the baby, but when she talked to the doctor, the doctor did believe it was an issue since the baby was still gaining weight. Sometime later, Peyton goes to Michael's job and encourages him to throw Claire a surprise party to cheer her up. He agrees it's a really good idea and gets Marlene involved. Later, while Solomon was painting the side of the house, he peered into the window and saw Peyton breastfeeding the baby, and Peyton immediately confronted Solomon. Are you a retard? Don't fuck with me, retard. Solomon vowed not to let Peyton hurt the family, even though he was visibly shaken by their altercation. Before he leaves that day, Claire and Michael surprise him with a new bike. Initially, he thought he was in trouble due to Peyton, but things were all good for now. This was a really sweet gesture, by the way. But Peyton later plants a seed by telling Claire that she didn't like how Solomon looked at Emma. Claire dismissed her and Peyton took back what she said and admitted that she could be wrong. This prompts Claire to talk to Emma and urge her to talk to her and to not keep any secrets from her. The next day, Peyton planted Emma's underwear in Solomon's cart, which Claire found, and again, this caused another asthma attack and the family fired Solomon. Emma doesn't take this well and avoids Claire. But your mommy wasn't mean like mine. If something happens to my mommy, you take care of me. Listen, Peyton is infiltrating this family like nobody's business, okay? Peyton later consoles Claire, even though she's causing all of this. And Claire mentions that Emma has been different with her lately. Peyton was influencing Emma and driving a wedge between them. After everything, Michael thought it was no longer a good idea for them to have the surprise party. But Peyton insisted that they continue with the party plans. Later, Marlene and Claire arrive at the house and Peyton helps her get a few things out the car. She glances at Marlene's purse, <laughs> plotting per usual, and Marlene observes Peyton with the baby and mentions how annoying the chimes were, not knowing they were a gift from Peyton. Marlene 
does not see for pain at all, even on a subconscious level. <laughs> Later that night, Claire and Peyton have girl talk and Claire mentions that she's found it hard to get romantic with Michael since having the baby. The subject then goes to Marlene and Michael and how Marlene was Michael's first love. They had dated in their younger years but had remained good friends. Peyton starts planting a seed of doubt within Claire about her husband's friendship with Marlene. Meanwhile, Marlene meets with Michael to discuss his secret party. She's suspicious of Peyton at this point and doesn't like her. During this dinner, she mentions that her cigarette lighter is missing and I'm sure it will come up soon enough. Not like she wants it to though. When Michael gets home, Claire smells smoke on him which makes her even more suspicious of Marlene and Michael having an affair. Later that night, Michael hears noises in the kitchen and when he comes down to check it out, he realizes that it was Peyton putting ice in the freezer. She asks him if she can get him something in a seductive way, but Michael declines and heads back to bed. Good choice. The next day, Claire and Michael tell Emma to inform them if she sees Solomon lurking around, but Emma doesn't see the big deal. If you see him around school or at the house or something like that. But you don't have to be afraid, okay? I'm not afraid of Solomon. This would have made me rethink some things, but I totally understand why they didn't, especially with what happened to Claire. I'm sure they were just being overprotective, and I can't fault them for that. But later, when Claire drops off Michael's clothes at the cleaners, she finds Marlene's lighter, and again, she has an asthma attack. She rushes home and confronts Michael and accuses him of cheating with Marlene, not knowing that everyone was there for the surprise party, including Marlene, who heard everything. This was embarrassing for her, to say the least. And this was yet another thing that was going wrong for Claire, and she had reached her limit. Peyton was really tearing down her mental health child. She made sure to put a rift between Claire and the one person that could see through her bullshit. The next day, Michael and Claire make up and Claire suggests that they get away for a few days. Just the family, no Peyton, since she started to suspect that Peyton was causing all these things to happen. Peyton overhears this from the baby monitor and she starts plotting yet again. Early the next morning, Peyton goes to Claire's greenhouse in the backyard to set a trap for Claire. Meanwhile, Marlene, who was a realtor, just so happened to get the listing for Peyton's old marital home on her desk. She noticed the chimes in the picture and gets the sudden urge to investigate. She finds out Peyton was Dr. Mott's wife and immediately tries to get in touch with Claire but couldn't reach her. Peyton suspects that she's onto her so when Marlene comes by the house and confirms that she knows her true identity, Peyton decides to use the trap she set for Claire for Marlene and it was a wrap for her. Now Peyton's focus was on Claire. She emptied all her asthma pumps by poking a hole in them and places them back in their usual places. This chick is psychotic, <laughs> okay? She leaves shortly after to go on a walk with the baby, leaving Claire to find Marlene's body, which of course sends her into another asthma attack. Those lungs were going through it, okay? She's unable to find a good pump and her attack gets worse the more she panics. She finally remembers she had an extra pump in her purse but passes out before she's able to reach it. The ambulance is called before Peyton makes it back and she acts all concerned for Claire. We know this a lot, but while the cops are there, they find Marlene's body. Claire goes to the hospital and spends a few days there. We also learn that Solomon has been keeping an eye on the family this whole time like he said he would. While Claire is away, Peyton stays with Michael and Emma and she tries to console Michael and do a bit more, but Michael wasn't with it. There's only one woman for me. That's all you need. After they pick up Claire from the hospital, Emma notices Solomon following them but doesn't say anything and Claire is on high alert and is now paying attention to everything Peyton is doing. While she was gone, Peyton redecorated the baby's room and Claire doesn't care for it. That was going way too far. Like, this is not your child. Why would you do that? But Claire remembers that Marlene had tried to get in touch with her before she died, so she goes to her office to hopefully get some answers. Her assistant shows her the last listing she looked at, which included Peyton's marital home, and Claire goes to check it out. When she gets there, another realtor lets her in and she walks around. 
When she goes upstairs, she sees the nursery, which is decorated in the same way that Peyton decorated hers. She also spots a breast pump, which puts two and two together for her. Now she knows why her baby seems to prefer Peyton over her. So Claire rushes home and confronts Peyton. Hi, Claire. We were worried about you. <laughs> Claire reveals to Michael that Peyton was Dr. Mott's wife and Peyton makes a last ditch attempt to insinuate that Michael and her were having an affair. But Michael shuts that down real quick and tells her Claire is the only woman for him. Again, we like Michael. Then Peyton slips up. I'll just get my baby and we'll be on our way. When Michael and Claire demand she leave, Emma overhears them and comes down the stairs to see what's going on and Peyton tries to get to her as well. It's okay, Emma. Mommy and daddy want me to leave. Claire tells Michael to call the police. Initially, he didn't want to, which was wild to me because you can clearly see this woman is crazy, deranged, but eventually he listens and calls the police. But unfortunately, they wouldn't be there for a while. Shortly after, Michael starts hearing music down in the basement where Peyton's room was and goes down to investigate. He turns the music off, looks around, and doesn't see anyone until he goes upstairs and gets knocked out by Peyton. Surprise, she never left. Claire overhears her scuffle and goes downstairs. She finds Michael in the basement and he tells her Peyton is somewhere in the house and tells her to call the police. As Claire calls the police again, Peyton tries to attack her with a shovel. She's able to dodge a few swings, but eventually gets knocked out. Peyton goes upstairs to get Emma and the baby. Emma pretends to help Peyton, but pulls a fast one. Tell your mommy, where's Joe? You're not my mommy! Period. She grabs her little brother and takes him into a closet to hide from Peyton. Meanwhile, Peyton is feverishly trying to get out of the room Claire locked her in, looking like old boy from The Shining. She hears the baby crying and thinks she's found him, but it was only the baby monitor. Emma strikes again. Eventually, she finds Emma and the baby in the attic with Solomon. Reminder, Solomon has been protecting this family for a minute on the low. He does not play about his people, okay? Claire finally makes it to the attic and poor baby is having another asthma attack and Peyton thinks she's won. My husband makes love to you, it's my face he sees. But surprise, surprise, Claire was faking her asthma attack and pounces on Peyton. Solomon stops Peyton from delivering a deadly blow and she starts attacking him, which gave Claire enough time and energy to push her out the window. Honestly, Solomon and Emma were the real MVPs. They looked out for each other tough. Claire asks Solomon to help take the baby downstairs, showing him that she trusts him not to hurt the baby or Emma. The police arrive soon after, and that's pretty much the end of the movie. And here are my final thoughts. Peyton was aiming at the wrong people the entire time. As I said earlier, I totally understand how devastating it must have been for her to lose her husband, her lifestyle, and her child all at the same time, and to also lose her ability to have another child. That's a lot to come to terms with all at once. She had every right to feel big feelings about that. However, I can't get over how she had so much hatred for the victims of her husband like he didn't cause any of this. All he had to do was not be a creep to not assault these women. She had zero empathy for these women who suffered at the hands of her husband. And honestly, just looking at the things she did to this family and their friends, she was probably similar to her husband in more ways than one and probably didn't see what he did as a big deal. The way she talked to Solomon and looked at him like he was below her, how she lashed out in the bathroom after telling Claire about her husband, she had so much rage. She striked me as someone who had mental issues or shysty ways prior to all of this. Peyton came into that family to destroy it and take over. She tried her best to break Claire down and to also break down all her relationships. She tried to drive a wedge between her and Michael, her and the kids, her and Marlene. She wanted to isolate her and drive her crazy, pretty much, and none of this seemed to be too much for Peyton or ridiculous even. She really thought she could step in, take over, and everything would be as normal after. I hated how she talked to Solomon, and I wanted to reach through the TV so bad, but I liked how they showed Solomon picking up on her vibe. Usually people like Solomon, if they're artistic or have similar challenges, 
they can read a person really well. So if Solomon wasn't messing with her, that was a huge red flag. I also loved how he protected the family and continued to look after them even after they fired him. He was not playing about Emma or their baby. Also, let me mention how Michael was such a supportive husband. He encouraged Claire to report the doctor so they could stop others from being hurt, encouraged her to get a nanny so she could have free time to focus on her hobbies, shut Peyton down when she tried to put the moves on him, he loved his wife and was not about to go there with her. This movie is yet another one that has aged pretty well and I enjoyed revisiting it for this video. Anyway, that's it for this recap. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. As for the next recap, all I'm gonna say is 2006. This movie is a coming of age story that's set in a particular Southern city where everybody's trying to get up, get out, and get something or be somebody they're not and cause a little trouble. See you next time, you guys. Bye.